to week four. So this week, we are uh, going to focus on what you are going to write in your statement about your sustained investigation. So I have some suggestions for you, and I want to go walk you through them. The biggest ideas after thinking about it and looking at the videos that they have on the website uh, and getting some tips from them, the people who are actually be scoring it, is that one, you can never start early enough. We can always revise it. You want to keep it simple, which means that you're actually answering the two questions that they have there, which have multiple parts. They emphasize the idea of choosing some exciting action verbs, and I think that's a good way to make your writing simple and yet a little bit more impressive. Make sure that you're addressing the why. That's probably the most important thing. Why are you making what you are making? It doesn't have to be an overly complicated idea, but you should address that if you want to get the top scores. Mention your selection of materials, which will help um, with a couple of the questions that they have. And mentioning that one work came from another work, even if this only happened once or if you make it happen in these next couple of weeks. So, starting now, my dad always used to say, you know, it's easier to do something than it is to worry about doing something. And I think he is more right than ever. Um, I could sit around and worry about making this video for you. And by the time I'm done worrying about it, I could be done. So get on that website, um, get yourself logged in and get something written in there. We can always make changes to it. Keep it simple. Um, you don't have to have a poetic voice when you're talking about your work. The work is the poetry. So we don't want just a bunch of ideas. We want to keep it simple. Like I was interested in blank at the beginning of the year. As the year progressed, my work shifted to blank. This happened for a lot of you guys. This shows them evolution, which is something they want to see. Don't feel like you had to follow a straight path from the beginning all the way to the end. If your idea changed, you want to mention that. We have written down um, what you started with. And if you've forgotten that, uh, I've got uh, evidence pictures and um, questions that we wrote down in the room that I can take a look at for you and, and inform you of what you said early in the year. Question number one says, identify the questions that guided your inquiry. It's very straightforward for you to start by saying, I started the year with questions about, and this led me to investigate. Notice that we're using some of their words there. Um, acknowledge that you started someplace and that you finished someplace else. Honesty is the best policy. If you view the web class about writing the statement, you'll notice that this guy uh, brings up this list of words and highlights some of these words. Uh, it's early on in there. Another teacher later talks about good action words. So take a look at this list, even though it's a little blurry screenshot, uh, or look at some other lists online and then try to substitute in some of these words for things like, I made, I did, I put together, you know, um, I experimented, I explained, I highlighted, I honed. All of these words are gonna make your statement sound a little bit more um, specific. And since they are showing you these lists, I think you would be very smart to take their advice since they're the ones giving you the score. Addressing the why. In the new rubric, you will receive a score between one and three for inquiry. Essentially what they mean there is, can you describe why you are making the work that you're making? What are you doing? Uh, if they don't know why after they read your statement, you get a one. If what you say relates to the imagery that they see there and it makes sense, you'll get a two or a three. Depends on whether or not it looks like the question led you to make the work or whether your idea is just illustrated with the imagery that you had there. 
um, the more the question guides what you did, the more likely you are to get a three. This is one of many scores that you will get uh, on your whole portfolio, but it is one. So you want to make sure that you try to address that question of why did I make the work? Second question says, describe how your sustained investigation shows evidence of practice, experimentation, and revision guided by the questions from your inquiry. I gotta fix that. We can break this down into two parts, which will help you get the synthesis part of your statement involved. So first I want you to just mention something about practice and experimentation, and then second, revision. If you mention your materials when you do this, you'll get that synthesis piece. So for practice and experimentation, I recommend that during this week, you create some studies you know, with your favorite media. So if you're a painter, I would get the paint out and I would water it down and smear it around on a piece of paper, not really painting anything, but seeing what happens if I let it um, get so watery that it pools. Um, uh, add crayons and paint over the top of it, but do some sort of like scientific testing of your materials. Then you can include some of those experiments in a slide and mention them, saying that you were testing the limits of your media there. That will show them that you've done some practice and experimentation. Because some of your work will be better than other pieces of work, it'll also show that you did some practice, that you got better. So including some of those pieces that weren't as good will also show them practice and experimentation. You can mention that. I got better because I used this material more and more. Revision. You could do this two ways. You could describe how your idea evolved and focus on revising your idea. And I started thinking about this, but then that led me to think about this, women in India versus just women in society in general or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Second thought, and this is a good thing for you to do right now, is to recreate a work that wasn't your favorite. So you could say something like, I recreated image two in images nine and 10, trying to refine, simplify, or select better media for the message. I highly recommend that as a culminating idea here that you recreate one of your pieces and refine it, get rid of some of the stuff or try to improve it um, in terms of thinking about what I'm communicating here. And that will show them that you've got evidence of revision in your portfolio. You certainly have enough time to make at least one more piece. Which leads us to the last slide. So <clears throat> if you don't directly recreate, recreate a piece. Make sure that you mention that one piece led to another somehow, some way, visually or based on your ideas. The way I did the sky in slide three changed the way that I went back and did the sky in slide two. Or when I had finished this piece, I knew I had to make a piece about fill in the blank there so that they see that you're thinking is evolving, which is something that they want. They don't want a whole bunch of the same thing over and over again. They wanna see some consistency in terms of your effort and uh, how you deal with materials and what you do, I don't know, how seriously you take yourself, but they don't wanna just see a whole bunch of the same thing over and over. I don't know, like I'm good at one thing and one thing only, but they, hear you talking about how your ideas move and evolve or your handling of material changed, that's a positive thing. So I would mention that. So use some of their words, um, things like inquiry questions, guiding their work, things like that. Do not use the word concentration. That's an old term. That's a minus word. As soon as they see it, they're going to say, oh, well, this person is not thinking about this as an investigation. Have a family member or your English teacher or a friend read your statement. Um, and if you're still not sure, read it out loud. If it doesn't make sense when you read it out loud, revise it. And while they tell you that they're not going to mark you down for spelling or something like that, 
use spell check. It just shows them that you take yourself seriously. They've got a lot of these things to grade. And if you aren't going to put forth minimal effort like hitting spell check, they're not going to reward you for that. They're not going to look the other way, even though they say they are. You know, these are serious people. These are professionals. And they're putting in time. So they want you to put in the time. All right, guys. So that was a lot. Um, I'm going to uh, go out of present mode here. And um, I hope that I get to talk to you guys soon. Um, if you haven't already, fill out that Google form. My plan is to do that tomorrow. And I hope that everything is going well um, and that you have a great week. We'll see those of you who check in on Google Meet on Wednesday. And we'll try to do it. I think we're at 1 o'clock this week. All right. Bye-bye.